Hello and welcome to today's lecture. Today we will be learning about the Sri Lankan English writer and Ramasimha. The lesson objective for today is to learn about the biographical details of the writer and Ramasimha as a writer uh, and also about certain critiques and what they have commented on Ramasimha and her poetry. First of all, we will be studying about the biographical details of the author. Annalise Henriette Katz Ranasimha was a Sri Lankan English writer of German origin who was born in Germany in 1925. She was a daughter of a Jewish family and she left Germany in 1939 for England. If we talk about her family, her parents and most members of her family circle died at Nazi concentration camps. And she has said that her English teacher back in Parkstone Girls Grammar School in Britain was actually the greatest influence on her writing. In England, she decided on a nursing career and trained at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London and as a nursing sister at Charing Cross Hospital, as well as the Burden Neurological Reserve Institute. She, she has held a diploma in journalism had spoke and writes, uh, has spoken and written in German, German, English, French, and some Hebrew, and has also spoken, seen her during her lifetime. She was married in 1949 to a Sri Lankan physician, and she settled in Colombo and afterwards immediately became a permanent resident of Sri Lanka in 1951. From there onwards, she has continued to live in Sri Lanka. She was a mother of two daughters and a son, and she died in her residence in Roswick Place, Colombo in 2016. So that is about her personal life. Let us now discuss her career as a writer. Ranasimha began writing in 1968. Her work has been critically acclaimed and has won both national and international awards and has been translated to a number of languages. Her focus can be primarily based on three themes. First of all, we see the Jewish experience of Nazism, Nazism. And this is an experience which is etched in most of her poems because this is actually a very important part of her identity. Some, something she feels a very deep interconnection towards. It also focuses on the victimhood as the emphasis is on the identification of the Jewish experience. So the suffering, pain and trauma takes center stage uh, of World War II in her poetry. Therefore, the Holocaust is actually a very important and plays, is very important and plays a predominant role in Ranasimha's writing. And another thing is personal relationships. So personal relationships are also very important when it comes to Ranasimha's poetry. We see in her writing how Anne Ranasimha engages with her kinship relations, the missing connections, uh, the emptiness and sorrow left by the loss of her de dearly departed loved ones, uh, about the emotional loss and longing created by their absence, the nostalgic moments, memories, and past recollections of happier times, as well as the bitter, bitter and jaded memories of suffering. We also see how Ranasimha engages with the thoughts and feelings that arise from contact with her second home in Sri Lanka. And this can be seen in terms of how she makes interconnections between her experiences and those of her own country, uh, and as well as the insurrection back in Sri Lanka, uh, as well as memories of uh, forgetting as opposed to the importance of remembering, especially when it comes to the poem uh, Vivere in Pace, which means to live in peace. And that is one of the poems that we will be studying in this series of lectures on Anne Vanasimha. If we talk about what certain critics have talked about and want to see her, um, let's briefly look at some of the things that they have said regarding the contents of Ramasimha's poetry. So Norman Sims particularly identifies 
Rana Sinha's unique position as a Jewish writer in Sri Lanka and Sims says that in a dialectic manner and Rana Sinha interprets making her poetry out of a problematic of history, memory and moral responsibility to act. Increasingly obsessed with the question of remembering because she knows what it means for the Germans to forget because it is through remembering that she creatively interprets her presence in Sri Lanka. She is very much a Jewish writer, but a Jewish writer of Sri Lanka. Here we can understand that Norman Sims particularly identifies, as I said earlier, about Rana Singh's unique positioning as a writer in geographical locations, in different geographical locations, right? So therefore, she discusses about, Rana Singh discusses about, according to Sims, uh, history and the importance of remembering and forgetting, especially with relation to history. And in terms of how Rana Singh talks about the importance of memory by accentuating the moral responsibility of remembering. Norman Sims says that it is through this uh, very distinctive positioning in diverse geopolitical locations that Rana Singha is able to creatively capture the Sri Lankan experience, especially during the times of conflict. And if we go to the next slide, here I have a comment on Aditya Bisanayaka's and uh, Bisanayaka's criticism on Rana Singha's poetry. So Bisanayaka says that they, meaning and Rana Singha's verses, are strong. They pierce the heart and disturb the mind. Through her work, Anne Rana Singh her tries to keep the torches burning for those who lost their lives in the Holocaust, Holocaust yet ens ensconced among the strong, powerful lines of her work with words which come rapidly like a long line of bullets fired from a shotgun. There are streaks of tremendous love and kindness. So we see that Bisanayaka comments on the power of Rana Singha's verses by saying that how Rana Singha's verses are so powerful because they come across as very disturbing and, and as well as unsettling. And Bisanayaka says that it is precisely through uh, these unsettling and disturbing verses uh, which comes across as very authentic that the reader can feel the author's piercing emotions. And it is precisely through these verses that the reader can understand and feel Rana Sinha's empathy, love, kindness, and humanity. So these are just two reviews uh, from Anne Rana Sinha's, uh, two reviews based on the criticisms of Anne Rana Sinha's poetry. And in our next lecture, we will be discussing the poem we were in Pache to live in peace. So that is the place I'm going to stop the very first lecture on Anne Ramasimha. Thank you very much for listening.